Having paused launches since way back in May, this week SpaceX resumed launching Starlink satellites, now equipped with space lasers. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on Starlink. Starlink is SpaceX's massive global constellation designed to bring satellite broadband internet, super fast, super low latency, to anyone anywhere from space. Well, sort of. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, upsides, downside catches with Starlink that we've covered in the past, so check our prior videos to go over all of that. But what we're going to give you an update on today is well, space lasers. Now, SpaceX finished launching its first orbital shell, uh, first constellation of Starlink satellites back in May and has been kind of in a pause ever since. They were expected to resume in um, July, but they didn't launch in July, they didn't launch in August, and they eventually disclosed that they were actually standing down and holding off, in part because of the global supply chain shortage, in part because of a lack of liquid oxygen to fuel their rockets because it's being diverted to hospitals, and, well, in large part because they decided to hold off on future Starlink launches until they finished the design of the Starlink 1.5 satellite version 1.5 that incorporates space lasers. Now, what are these lasers for? Well, we've been talking about them for a while. Starlink originally was proposed to have these from the very beginning, and they left them out of the first generation satellites because they were expensive and complicated, and nobody had ever really figured out how to do this on this sort of scale before. But what these lasers will allow Starlink satellites to do is to communicate to each other in space. So you're down on the ground, your signal goes up to the satellite, and rather than being relayed by the satellite down to a ground station, which means the ground station has to be within range of you, the laser-equipped Starlink satellites will be able to relay your connection from one satellite to the next to the next, and then down to a ground station, letting Starlink provide service to places they have not deployed ground stations, and places where ground stations really aren't possible, like out to sea or in extremely remote areas. So this is a major expansion in capability of what Starlink will be able to do once the, once the sky is filled with laser-equipped Starlinks. And, well, they finally now started doing that. They launched this past Monday the first 51 version 1.5 Starlink satellites from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California into a near polar orbit, a 70 degree inclination orbit, which will, as they populate the 700 plus satellites required for this shell, will let them have service from about 70 degrees north latitude to 70 degrees south latitude. That includes Alaska, which the first phase of Starlink did not cover at all. It includes northern Canada, it includes northern Europe, it includes a lot of places that weren't covered before. Um, basically will then give coverage to everywhere on the planet except the extreme poles, the very far north, very far south, where there are very few people, and, well, SpaceX will be filling in those gaps eventually anyway as well. So, big news. They're, they're back to launching uh, Starlink satellites. Uh, they're going to have lasers. How quickly are they going to get this constellation up? Well, it's going to take at least around 15 launches to get this next shell up that will expand the service. Um, to further north, further south, and we'll also be adding capacity to the rest of the world. So it's going to take some time, probably at least six months for the launches, and then um, you know two, three, four months for the satellites to reach their final orbits and go into service. So if you're excited about well, getting Starlink service in Alaska, well, you know, put your buttons on pause. You know, try to be patient. It won't likely be possible until at best next summer, so summer 2022, when this is all finally rolled out. Um, but hey, cool stuff, good progress. Great to see uh, SpaceX tackling this next shell. Um, we'll see how quickly they set up a pace of launches to now fill it in, now that they've gotten the first one off the ground. In other uh, Starlink-related news, and since our last update last month, there's been some more confirmations of a lower cost dishy receiver um, in the works. Now, the dishy is the, the satellite dish you use to receive Starlink. SpaceX sells it for $499, and people have seen these quotes coming from SpaceX, SpaceX executives talking about a lower cost dishy and how they're bringing the cost down and all of this. And they're excited. They're thinking, wait, they're, 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 it'll be cheaper than $499 to buy. Well, don't count on that. The, the current dishy that SpaceX has been selling um, you know, for the 
the past year and at the past period of its beta period is cost them originally around three thousand dollars to build they've gotten the cost down to around a thousand dollars and well that means for every one they sell they're basically you know subsidizing a huge portion of the cost they're selling it at a huge loss which is not a good way to run a profitable business and so spacex has said they're planning to drive that cost down they're hoping to get to the point of break even so wouldn't necessarily count on cheaper dishy being available to consumers this means well spacex cheaper to produce it'll be cheaper for them they're going to be going less into the hole for every dish he's sold. Uh, SpaceX C CFO Brett Johnson actually recently shared at a satellite conference that they're currently only able to produce 5,000 dishes per week, um, but that with the next generation that will be out sometime later this fall or by the end of the year, they'll be able to produce more and presumably it will be costing them less. So hopefully that will help them ramp up the deployment because well, there are a lot of people who want Starlink. They've got a 500,000 person at least waiting list around the world of people who've put down deposits. And well, at the current, at the pace of 5,000 a week, that's going to take them uh, probably two years or more to even just catch up on that backlog. backlog. So St Starlink is, is, it's, it's still just getting ramped up. Now, a lot of people are really excited about Starlink. They, they're just frustrated with their current ways of getting connected. They're frustrated. Um, not having coverage everywhere or having limited data plans, and they're just hungry for better options. And, you know, just, just the fantasy of Starlink has built up a lot of unrealistic expectations about just what Starlink will do, and you know, it's you know, people are ignoring its limitations, which we've covered in prior videos and stuff. And they're also, you know, over excited about how, just how quickly this will be possible in various places. It takes time to build a constellation that covers the globe and is able to serve so many people and to build all the receivers and equipment for that. So, you know, SpaceX, Starlink, super exciting stuff. Just sometimes some people need to pause, hold back their expectations just a little bit before, you know, before they get to a little bit too excited and particularly before they invest in you know, this early first generation gear, we know a lot of RVers who've even used fake addresses to try and get their hands on Starlink you know, ahead of when their official addresses are slated to get it. And some of them have had really good luck, you know, taking Starlink on the road. And some have been very frustrated because so few cells are allowing people to activate service, to turn on services. You move Starlink around the country and a lot of people have gone months and months and months paying their monthly fees and never being able to find a place that their current Starlink will work. So is Starlink about to turn on service to you know the, a broader portion of the country? Um, are they going to start allowing more capacity in all these cells that are currently closed down to new customers and are marked at capacity? Um, it's kind of anyone's guess. You know, SpaceX moves at a at its own pace, at a kind of an incredible pace, but they're not really focused on the needs of RVers, cruisers, people who want to take Starlink and move it between two different houses, all that stuff. They've got plenty of customer base that they need to target in their target, uh, you know, the target of uh, rural residential customers or customers in places where there really aren't other connectivity options. Um, so, you know, us sort of nomads aren't their focus yet. Clearly, SpaceX, though, is thinking about how to serve this market. And in fact, they recently sent out surveys to customers who had expressed interest in Starlink in RVs, asking 18 questions about how they use their RVs, how they would use Starlink on the go, all of this. So this is they're building up their customer information, their market analysis of just what this market needs. Uh, if you are actually a current Starlink customer, you can go, if you didn't get the survey, go to customer support and... Uh, do a support ticket request that you be added to the survey list and SpaceX will be happy to get your opinion and your feedback and that could help encourage them to well serve us so those of us who want to take our dishes and move with them from place to place to place or well eventually have the mobile version of dishy that will work on a boat or even an RV in motion so that's kind of an update on the the latest with SpaceX they are up to a lot of good things there's a lot of good stuff happening they're back to launching um, but they're also still, in some ways, moving really slowly. You know, nobody, you know, basically the southern United States and Florida, nobody there can even get Starlink just yet. They haven't turned on the cells there, even though the satellites are in place and they technically could at any point. But 
Well, until they do, we'll be tracking it all the time. And when they do, we'll have further news updates. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.